Welcome to Watts 3010, Introduction to Web Development. This course is part of the Certificate in Web Technology and Application Studies at Seattle University. I'm Becky Peltz, and I'm going to walk you through the set of tutorials for Skills 1 Repo, which teach you the basics of HTML and CSS. There will be a separate video for each tutorial in the Skills 1 Repo. You will have to fork the repo once and publish to GH Pages once, but I'll point this out in every video. The Skills 1 tutorial prepares you for Project 1, a page with internal navigation. This video is a, going to be about the box model, which is a very important um, model and, and concept to understand when working with block elements and understanding how they are sized <coughs> and um, how you can style them. Um, it's very important for layout in particular. Now we're going to start working on this Skills 1, and if you haven't already forked it, you can go to this Skills 1 <clears throat> repo on SU Web Dev, fork it, clone it to your local drive, and open up a, an editing session um, where you'll find the box model um, tutorial that we're working on. You can see that it comes with some CSS, uh, some images, and an index.html. Uh, before we get into the notes on this, let's just see what this, what you're given to start with. In this index.html, we have a picture of a cat and um, a little bit of content, some header, and then here we've got a really large picture of a, of a, of a sky, you know, light and everything, and and some, some attribution. So this is what we're starting with. And um, if we go back to the README, we can see that in the end we're going to end up with something that looks like this, where there's some centering, there's some margins, padding, borders, um, and, and things like that. So margin, padding, and borders are an important part of the box model. Centering is a, a very basic layout. We'll look at a very basic layout technique for centering. Um, you'll notice that this cat doesn't look like the cat that you see here, and so the reason why that might be, and so don't worry if your cat doesn't look the same, if you look at the code for this, uh, you can see we're, we're introducing some tags that, that you haven't seen before, the figure tag, which we can use to encapsulate images, and the image tag, which has a source, looks kind of like what you would see in an href, um, where we're giving it a URL, or a file location, uh, and so in the, we also have a fig caption, which allows us to caption our image. Uh, we have an anchor tag, which allows us to give it href to provide a link, and we'll be talking a lot more about links in another tutorial. Um, and we've got this section where we're showing an image. So. Um, and this image is a little bit different in that, uh, let's see, this image, this place kitten, this is really a placeholder. And place kitten, it's, it's um, a website that designers use to just create cu uh, custom size images that you might use in a design document. So where you know you're going to want an image of a certain height and width, uh, you can use Place kitten to provide that image for you. So this is coming from the internet rather than from our local file system, and it's going to give us a 200 by 300 size image, which we are going to see that the 200 is the width. So the width of an image is are always specified first, and then the height 300. So two ways to to get an image, um, and then the image that we're showing in this striking sky um, is coming from our own images directory. So we're kind of jumping into, we're kind of not going to look into too much detail on some of this, but we're going to be more concerned with providing uh, margin, padding, and borders around our, our, uh, our content. Um, so that we end up with something that looks kind of like this, some centered images with some borders. And again, this is all just introducing um, CSS and the box model. So uh, if we look at the README on this, we can see, yes, 
margin padding border and content that uh, we can explore the way that the browser renders HTML by default. So you can see um, that when I just have this HTML and I haven't provided any styling, everything kind of is moved to the left of the page. Um, all of the content seems to be to the left of the page. We do get a little bit of styling for our headers, and um, you can, if you can notice, the this look, this styling looks a little different than the caption. So everything here is default styling, um, and the next thing that we're said is um, some of the tags contain content while others import it, and we've seen content imported before when we set up CSS inheritance and we imported a CSS style sheet. Now we're um, using a source to import these images. And so you'll notice this, there's no, we don't, in the image tag, we don't have a closing tag because we don't really place content into an image tag. Um, but we are placing the image and the, and the fig caption into a figure. So the figure does have a closing, and the fig caption has a closing. So thinking about where content is coming from, whether it's you know coming directly out of the HTML or being brought in from a, a different source, file system, internet, um, those are things that we want to keep in mind, you know, kind of keep an eye on. And then we're talking about using the browser inspector tool to view margin padding border and content. And here's a picture taken from a, a website where you can see the brown shows you that there's no margin. The border here is is there's no numbers. So these are all empty, no padding, no more border, no margin. Our content is 184 by 290. And again, that would be width times height, width by height. So we can do that. We can explore that in our own pre-styled document by right, or the way to get into the Chrome DevTools is in, in Chrome, browser, right click on the window and choose inspect. This will open up a, a tremendous set of tools, which um, we'll, we'll get into some of them in this course. One of them that's important is this kind of visualization of the box model. And you can see here, it's kind of uh, interesting that we are, our content, let's just, um, right now we're, if you point this, if you select over here the HTML, it will show you the current box for that. So you can see when I'm pointing at the body, I've got a default margin of 8 pixels and then the border and padding are, are zero. And then I have this default size, of, which is my the body size based on the window. And um, if you notice as I make the window smaller, it records a smaller amount in there. So at the body level, you can, you can explore that. And then for each one of the tags, you can go in and explore that. And here we have a block tag, and so the Width is going to be the full width of the window, heights 37, and these are in pixels. And pixels, again, are just, you can think of as the little light sources that make up the window. And as you just kind of step through, you can see this. And if I click on an image, um, in this case, we're clicking on the image of this kitten that's 200 by 300, and so we see the content is 200 by 300. There's no styling applied there. And in this section, we have the, the cloud and the cloud uh, dark clouds dark and dramatic picture. We have 1280 by 1920. So they, this is just kind of taking a look at what we're starting with and seeing that um, here on a, on a paragraph tag, we have a default margin of 16 on the top and bottom. So these are the, the browser defaults. So we just want to kind of get a look at that because we often want to override those, and you're going to see how we're going to do that in this exercise. Um, so the way that we want to override things is by using a browser reset. And a browser reset, if I open this up for you, there's an article here about it, and it's Eric Meyer uh, 
has written one that's been used by a lot of people over time. And it, it's basically just CSS that sets everything to zero, sets border padding margin to zero, font size 100%. Kind of, the, so the idea is that different browsers might have different defaults, but with this browser reset, we can guarantee that no matter what browser you look at it on, we're going to be initializing them all with the same values for properties of our tags so that, you know, we're not going to like obviously blank everything out, but we're going to make it a very standard and sort of reset its size so that if we want a margin, we're not, we're not battling a default margin. We know that margin starts at zero and that if we need a margin, it's up to us to supply it in our style sheet. And so this is a style sheet and you can see we're looking at margin pattern and border, font size, font, various uh, properties and values, some of which you've seen and some which may be new. But what we're being asked to do in, in this tutorial is to import this reset.css file, which is just a copy of Eric Meyer's reset. Just get uh, bring link that into our index.html. So to do that, we're just going to go to the head and we're going to link link in rel equals style sheet href equals CSS reset. So we're just kind of making use of this uh, reset and now if we go back to our page and refresh it all of our defaults are gone so we no longer have that 16 we our headers don't look like anything special there's no real visible uh, styling being provided by the browser so that is our first step so after getting the reset in place we're going to start styling the page um, and we're going to do that by first creating a style.css file and um, we're going to link it into our index.html and we're going to put it below the reset. And why is that? Well, if you remember the ideas of inheritance and specificity, we want our, new, our styles to be applied close. We want our styles closer to the content so that they win out in the inheritance uh, algorithm so that and, and we do that just simply by putting the style uh, link below the reset link. And so let's create this style file. And then in our CS, in our index.html, we're going to put the link right in here. href equals all right, so that gets us the styling. Um, and the next thing that we want to do, we're going to do some adjustments on the HTML. So we're going to replace the div with an H2. And the question is, OK, to have two HTML two tags on a page. Well, yes, it is. We talked about this with semantic um, and structure that it's, you know, you're only going to have one H1, but you can have multiple H2s. So we're going to go in here and replace this div with an h2. Okay, so if we look now at our project, we, but we, we don't really see any difference because remember our reset took all the styling away from the header tags. Next thing we want to do is we're going to use an h2 instead of a p tag for this text next to striking sky. Um, one thing to note about, the, if you didn't notice it before, on that sky picture, um, notice how this text wrapped around. So it didn't automatically go to the next line even before we had our reset in it won't go to the next line and that is because images are kind of a different set of a different we've talked about you know the concept of block images where they take up the whole line versus inline images which 
are just placed next to each other in a line. Um, it turns out, and so this is giving us the appearance of an in that the image is an inline um, text because it, it doesn't go to the next line before the next element is rendered. Um, and in fact, an image is a special thing in that it's both inline and block. So it can have dimension like a block element. It can have a height, um, but it by default will behave inline and let text wrap. So here I've got, this is a paragraph tag that seems to be on the same line. And what we're being asked to do here is to change that paragraph, paragraph to an H2. So if I look at this, um, oh, actually, this is the header. So that change represents this striking sky. I believe the next change is asking us to add a P tag around the text next to the picture. So if we add a P tag, and we can just wrap that, um, we can wrap this whole set of text, including the anchor tag. We'll just use our Command Shift P, Control Shift P, wrap, and give it a paragraph tag. So that again is going to push us down. So before we didn't have any sort of, uh, we were just operating kind of in the inline mode of an image followed by some text. But now that we've wrapped that with a P tag, we're seeing it, it go to the next line because a P is a block element. All right. The next thing that we want to look at is the, the pictures. So um, the kitten picture, like we mentioned in the beginning, is being given its dimension just by the fact of the way that it is called for from the internet. This kit place kitten allows you to give height and width, and so our content will be 200 pixels wide by 300 pixels deep. Um, but now we want to give some dimension to this image that we're bringing in uh, from our own file system. And we saw that it's a really large image, but we want to kind of scale it down. And when you're doing any kind of scaling with images using CSS, or you can actually use height and width attributes, there's two ways to do it. You want to keep the ratio the same, or it's going to end up looking skewed. And um, so to do that, if you look at these instructions, it's telling you that you need to take into account the natural width of it when you do your scaling. So if I, if you read this, it's going to tell you that um, I'd like to get my size down to 400 high. So I want to get my, I want to get my height down, and I'm, and I'm. That kind of gives me about half of a normal laptop screen, which is usually about 1280 by 800. So I kind of want to just divide my height in half, um, or, or not. In, I, w I want it to fit on half my screen. So I need to get the height down to somewhere around 400. And my image, when I inspected it, came out to 1280 by 1920. So I'm going to want to provide a ratio that will bring 1920 down to around 400. And what I did is divide both by 4, the height and the width. So you need to apply your, your dimension scaler to both height and width to keep it from skewing. And I end up with 1320 by 4, 320 by 480. And that size can be given with a height and width attribute or in a style sheet. And then there's a note here that it's better to restyle to to resize images. Um, it is not. It is better not to restyle resize images with uh, style and attributes, but rather to use cropping. And we're going to learn about that later in the quarter. But right now we're going to apply some height and width attributes, and we want the 320, the width of 320, and a height of 480. So we'll just go right into this image tag.
and give it a width of 320. And you don't use the units on these attributes for height and width for 80. Whereas if you were doing the styling in a spread in your CSS, you would. Now, one of the reasons why we want we do this often over doing it in style sheet is that this tells the browser right away how much space to reserve for this item because it's going to be pulling this item from file system or internet and this kind of speeds up rendering so we're going to put that in there let's go take a look at the effect of that okay so you can see that we really shrunk that down and we got it down to where it's roughly half the size of our of our um, laptop and of course laptop dimensions differ as well as how I've got my resolution set and everything but that's what we want there. All right, so the next step is step five here. We're going to actually put some styles into our style sheet. And the directions say set a font size of 3 rem to h1. And a rem is a unit that this is the, you know, the size of the character m at the root, which is before it's been adjusted by any kind of nesting. So it's a, it's a kind of a relative size that you can count on no matter what level of nesting your HTML is. So we're going to take H1 and set the font size to 3 rem and the margin to 0.5 m rem. So let's see. So take the H1 and the font size to 3 rem margin. I think we can make this easier. Let's close others and open up the preview. Open that preview to the side and preview it. Okay, so we're down here in step five. And we've got three rem and and again the rem yes so we've got the rem unit set up one and a half uh, we've got that backwards one and a half rem and three rem so let's take a look at the effect of that and maybe even explore it a little um, we've adjusted the class or the styles on this. So let's look at the box model for that. So I click on this computed, and you can see the margin. It's giving it in pixels, 48 pixels, and that's because that's what the browser takes my rem calculation to be. It figures out that's 48 pixels. Um, and then we've uh, also, for the font size, we can look at the style, and we can actually see here under styles coming from our style sheet that our font size is one and a half rem and our margin three rem. So this all looks good and it's kind of a good idea as you're styling to keep an eye on that. Uh, and by the way when you're in this style sheet you can actually play with these styles here so I can take that margin and I can uh, well, really increase it and you see that kind of looks odd. I can also take this, I'm using the arrow keys to kind of play around and see. And so designers will often do this in the in a dev tools. Um, they'll just experiment with styles by playing around with that. And as soon as I refresh it, whatever I've changed it will go away. All right, so the next step in here is for the H2, set the font size to one and a half rem and the margin to three rem. So see is that the same as what we did h1 is 3 rem and half of rem oh h1 font size 3 rem margin 2.5 okay so that was a little more than we wanted and then the h2 so this is all usually dictated to you by a designer there's some kind of an image and we're working off of this image at the bottom but a lot of times you can get very specific they can give you very specific other times you just kind of estimate um, you kind of get used to looking at at those uh, pictures and estimating. So H2, the font size is 
0.5 ram and the margin is 0.3 ram. Okay, and so let's see if we can see the effect of that. Yes, so we've got an H2 in there, a couple of H2s. Um, oh, that doesn't look right at all, though. That, um, H1 font size 3 RAM. Oh, got that backwards. Okay. Font size 3 RAM. Yes, it definitely helps to check as you go. Okay, that looks good. And then for the P tag, we want to set padding to 10 pixels. Okay, so the difference between padding and margin is padding is, if you look at this box model, let's take a quick look here. Um, padding, so the way you would picture something is you have your content, and then padding is, is the space between your content and the border. And then margin is the space between the border and whatever is next to the element. So you can think of the margin as being outside of the element's border and padding as being inside it. So here we're being asked to set padding to 10 pixels um, on the paragraph. So and padding. So if you want it 10 pixels all the way around, you could do 10 pixel, 10 pixel, 10 pixel, 10 pixel. Um, which is top, right, bottom, left. It's always in that clockwise orientation. But since they're all the same, I can just set it once, and that says set all sides of this paragraph to have padding of 10. And um, so I think that paragraph was located down here. Yes, this was our paragraph. So we put 10 pixels around this paragraph. And if I inspect that paragraph, um, and I can actually move this inspector over here to the right, you can see that my padding is 10 pixels. So it's really important to kind of get the, use these tools, go back and forth, be checking your work. Um, it's easy to make typos and mistakes. So for the image, we want to have a, a margin of 10 pixels. So this is saying, that if there's a border, we want the space to be outside the border. So 10 pixels margin. And it's going to be the same size all the way around. And for the fig caption, we also want a margin of 10. Now, since we don't have any other styles for those two tags and they're both the same, you can put those together. So if you use a comma, that means, OK, apply all these styles to that and then also apply all these styles to whatever is in the comma separated list. So you can have many different styles. Sometimes you don't want to do that because it's like you might be doing, they're very different and you might, you know, very different tags for very different uh, reasons. And so you might want to keep them separate. You might be wanting to add some other style attributes to the image that definitely wouldn't apply to the fig caption. So you can create, okay, create a div with a class of container that surrounds all the content. We'll use this to center the content on the page. Okay, so right now, you know, by default, all the, everything is kind of left, set to the left. And this is saying put a, put a div around. So the div is one of our non-semantic uh, tags, but it's useful for applying styles. Div and span are non-semantic semantic tags are useful for applying styles. So I'm just going to wrap this entire, everything that's in the body, I'm just going to wrap that whole thing, uh, set of tags into a div tag. Okay, and let's format that so that it, you can see we kind of nested everything inside this div tag, and then we're going to give it a class equal a container. So you see that a lot, and you'll see that as you work through a lot of things in this course, that the class container as sort of a holder, a div, kind of non-semantic. And it's just so we can apply a style across that whole, everything in there. And so it's a class, so we're going to use the dot. And then um, we're going to use margin zero auto. Okay, what's happening there? So 
when you have just two entries for your margin values, the first one refers to top and bottom, and the second one refers to left and right. So we're saying don't apply any margin above and below this container, um, but auto means take whatever content there's in there and give it the same margin on either side. So this is kind of a, I'm just going to put a comment here, centering technique. Okay, um, because what's happening when you say left and right or auto, it doesn't matter how big you make the screen, it's always going to try to keep them in the center so that they have the same value, so that the left and right. And we're also told that we want a text align center. So that will say, uh, take all the content that's text and center it. And so this should, see, that, that changes things quite a bit. So we've moved everything away from the left, and we've kind of centered everything. So all the text gets centered, all the images are centered, the fig caption, everything is now centered. All right, and now we're at adding the border to the images. So we're going to um, apply the, all of these styles to the image tag. And we want um, a border radius of 10 pixels. And we're going to see that that gives us sort of a curvature, a softer look to the, to the square that make up our images. So we'll make that 10 pixels. And there are a number of different units. You can look into border radius and see all of those. And then we're going to want a, a border itself to be black 10 pixels. And we're going to use a shortcut. And I've got a link to shortcuts in here. Um, Will be in your resources. Um, so, both you know, anytime you see multiple values for a property, um, you've seen it. You can do this with fonts. I think I have a link open here that shows you that tool reset. Uh, yes. Well, you know, there. So sh uh, shortcut. Let's see, I'm pretty sure I had one on here. Shortcut. Yeah, shortcut properties here. So um, this describes how you know you can specify each property of say a background separately, um, or or a font separately, or you can bundle them together into a single shortcut. But the order matters. So um, if you want to use shortcuts, you can you can look into that. And we're going to use a shortcut here. Um, so let's see, we're going to use the border, radiant border shortcut, which would give us 10 pixels solid. So either solid, dotted, space, you know, dashes, different, different styles you can make a border. But we're going to do this, and then we're going to use box sizing. So box sizing is kind of a, an interesting border box. Uh, it's it's funny because the default for box sizing is um, is content box, but everybody really wants it to be border box because that kind of makes it easier to understand what's going on. And um, the best way I can explain this to you is with something visually. But basically, it allows us to count the padding and the border as to, as as part of the content instead of adding that on later so we um, when we're setting up that content but let's take a look I think this this link here uh, really helps to see how this box sizing works so if I set a width on my block element to 100 percent and do content box it fits nicely no problem um, and then here again we and content box by the way is the default and then what happens if I add border and padding and I give it 100%, it's not counting the border and the padding as part of the content when it does its, when the browser does its calculation. So it actually overflows out of the container. And that's not a good thing. You don't want to be dealing with that. I mean, there are overflow properties you can apply, but in general, you, you, that's not your intention. But when you give it border box, the border and the padding become part of its calculation, and then it comes back in. So you'll see this border, uh, Border, this box sizing border box put into most style sheets and I'm, I'm surprised it's not the default but but it is widely used 
And if you ever run into problems with overflow, take a look at the, the box sizing. So I think that should get us to where we want to be here. And yes, we can see we've got our border. And you can see this curve, this is the border radius. So let's inspect that and we'll, we'll remove that so you can see what that looks like. So if I'm in here and I take border radius off, it becomes very squared. And if I leave border radius on, I can keep applying this um, and ultimately it, it will turn into a circle or, or maybe an oblong circle, but it will become very circular. So um, those are um, some introduction to uh, some new tags and some new styles, but also I hope an understanding of this box model, which is composed of the margin, padding, border, and content, because we're going to be using those a lot as we get into um, various types of layout. Uh, so let's say we're all done here, and so we'll control tick, get status, we'll add our commit dash n, add box model, get push, and um, what we should see then is if I go to my skills one repo that I'm working on here, when I click, it's going to take a minute for it to publish, but when I click on this, yeah, it hasn't published yet. So it does take a minute to publish. And so there we are. And again, my picture is not exactly what it was even to start with. Um, don't worry about the cat picture as long as it's the same size and it's centered. And this looks like it's matching the picture that we are trying to get down here. Um, and so you can just, uh, once again, you'll be turning in this skills1 URL. Um, the rendered and the skills one URL for the code. All right.